you love tours of vans, reviews, some call them. And I am very guilty of this. Many YouTubers in the RV space are guilty of this. We walk it through a floor plan and we open cabinets, we open cupboards, we open doors, and we say, hey, this is kind of cool. But is it realistic for you to actually RV in that floor plan? We don't know because we never actually put real world items in the van for you to discover whether or not that van floor plan works for you or not. In this video, what we do is we're gonna measure the livability, the workability, and the likability of a particular floor plan, in this case, a Coachman Nova 20C, and you will see me put in real world items such as 12 pack of beverage, dozen eggs, plates, cups, spoons, and a coffee pot. The purpose is to determine whether or not those daily items that you would use in your RV experience works in this floor plan to give you the RV experience that you want. To make this even easier for you, what we've done is we've put together a worksheet to help you identify your criteria and help you build a toolkit so you can bring those items to your dealer to determine whether or not the floor plans you are most interested in that allow you to RV the way you want to RV with the items you want to RV in. Let's jump into the Scott score of the Coachman Nova 20C. The first thing we're gonna do is jump outside and take a look at ground clearance. Outside the rig, we're gonna use my trusty $100,000 measuring tape, and we're gonna measure what is the lowest point of this van, this Co uh, Coachman Nova 20C. Um, I've already kind of a, given a scan below, and what I found is this. One is the bracket for the running board, which is six inches off the ground at its lowest point. Hopefully you can see that. And the second lowest point of the van is, which is right here. And that too, with me climbing under, comes in at six inches off the ground. So the two is lowest points is the that and the running board bracket. Interestingly, these plumbing connections are quite a bit off the ground. This is eight inches off the ground, the lowest drain point there that I see. So that's pretty good. And these are a whopping 10 or more. Out of three points on the ground clearance, we're gonna give it two points out of the possible three points because that's pretty average. Six inches of ground clearance on a non-lifted vehicle. The next area we want to examine carefully is the great room which I'm sitting in. And this is a great room. There are nine points available for two people dining at the dining table simultaneously, movie night, watching a movie from a comfortable position, and space separation. Are you crammed together or can you get a little bit apart in the same room at the same time? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is put up our lagoon table. Now this lagoon table is, I would say, on the small size just from the start. Well, let's go ahead and set this up for two people for dinner. With dinner set up, this would be a pretty challenging eating at the same table without having it either larger that you make or buy somewhere or having a second table altogether. Um, this can be done. Just dropping my fork. One could sit here and eat, and one could sit here and eat. You could probably sit in that chair, but it would be kind of a stretch and you'd be you know, moving your food a long way from your mouth. So you'd probably end up sitting here and the other would sit here and that's how you would dine. Um, these are 10 inch plates to give you some sense of uh, size. So it can be done. Um, this is not gonna get high marks for eating for two at this particular table in this particular configuration of tables. As kind of thought, movie night's pretty easy here. You can swing your table out, beverage, beverage, popcorn, watch the TV, somebody can kick back like this, chase lamp style, couple of pillows. Uh, somebody can sit here, same deal, chase lounge. Um, so this is gonna get really high marks. It's a big TV. It's it's in the right position for movie night, and you're not looking at it from a long way away out of the cab. And it's a smart TV, which is really important. You can run apps on the TV, not having to rely on uh, a hardware device, uh, even like a Luka stick or an Apple TV. But uh, this is getting the highest marks. This gets three points out of three. Next is space separation. In a van, in a tight space, it's important to me, maybe it's important to you, that you can get a little separation of space in the same interior of the van. In this case, you can do that pretty easily. Somebody can sit here, somebody can be over there. 
the chairs spin around up front, and there's a lagoon table, well, not a lagoon table, but a pedestal table mount. Let me show you that. And so somebody could be sitting up front with one or both of the chairs sit around with your pull table, mounted table, which is right here. So very definite. If you're camped, I'll say parked for duration, somebody can be eating, working up here, and definitely somebody can be eating, working, sleeping, something like that back here. So I'm giving this three points out of three for space separation. For great room, this area earns seven points out of a possible total of nine for this space. Let's move into one of my favorite rooms in a van. All right, so now we're in the galley of the Nova 20C. It's a really attractive galley. My criteria come down to four components. And it's about the size of the items I use on a regular basis. Your items might be different. Go to the worksheet, figure them out for yourself, and then bring it with you to a dealer. This is the purpose of this video and the exercise itself. My items are, will a 12 pack of beer fit in the fridge? Don't judge me on my beer. A dozen eggs, will that fit comfortably in the fridge? And can I store my coffee maker and use it on the counter while leaving counter space available for other things? My fourth element is a seven pound bag of ice. I use a lot of ice for iced coffee, for drinks, ice water even, and having a seven pound bag of ice in my freezer to me is very important. That takes a pretty sizable freezer. Let's walk through that together now. We're gonna start with the first item, which is a 12 pack of beer. I use canned beer because it fits really comfortably in my fridge. I use a glass to actually drink the beer out of. So will a 12 pack of canned beer fit in the fridge? Let's look. And this Novacool is one of the biggest fridges, if not the largest, for a Class B RV. And we can see that a 12 pack of beer fits super easily into this. And I can actually put another one right next to it. So I can have two 12 packs of beer, a full case of beer in the bottom shelf and still have all of that space available. That is stunning. Big pass on, a pass being good on the fridge beer test. Let's look at a dozen eggs since we have the fridge open and will a dozen eggs comfortably fit? Yes, we have shelves here that can be moved up and down and arranged and very easily a 12 uh, dozen eggs, 12 eggs in their package can very easily fit in any one of these shelf configurations, long ways or short ways, whatever you want to call that. So good job on that. Looking at the freezer down below this is a drawer style freezer which is so beautiful and let's imagine we had a pound bag of ice which will put the size right here and that would easily fit in one of these spaces here so you can have one two bags of ice for sure or one bag plus uh, other items in here so this is a really nice freezer hey everybody this is a five cup coffee maker uh, from Walmart. It didn't cost very much money, but it does a beautiful job of making five cups of coffee. To give you a sense of space, this is about 10 inches with a handle going this way. It is mm, just over 10 inches, sorry, 10 inches tall. And at the widest point, it's probably up here, and that's six inches uh, wide. So the question is, where will this fit for storage? Will it fit in one of these overhead cupboards? Let's check. And in my Travado, I sort of have to tilt it in and go. So yes, indeed, this will fit very nicely up here. And I really love this Coachman um, material. It's kind of like carpet, bottom, side, and top. Why is that important? So that things will stick and not rattle around back and forth as they're moving around. So this gets three points for having coffee maker storage. And can I use the countertop while I'm doing other things? And that would be a yes. I can actually make coffee right here. Here's a plug-in. If I don't need the sink, it can sit here. Here's a plug-in. So you have all this space available with your coffee maker deployed making coffee for you and your dearly beloved. The Coachman Nova 20C Galley out of 12 points gets 12 points. All right, next area to examine is the bedroom, a very important room in any RV. This has a possible of nine points, three categories, three points each category. First category is, can two people sleep comfortably in the van? Let's make up this 
area for two twin beds, leaving the middle section open to keep in and out for the restroom middle of the night. Let's do that by pushing the button to engage the bed to come down. So this is a motorized bed. What it's going to do is come from a couch position to come forward to meet these ends right here. We do that by pushing the button here, that, and the bed becomes a bed <laughs> at a touch of a button, pretty fast too. So let's measure this quick to see if, I, if people could comfortably put their torso up here, their legs here, so one twin bed, if you will, a second twin bed, leaving space in the middle for the dog, and maybe something like that for a nightstand, which you also have nightstand here and storage, nightstand here for storage, even a CPAP can be mounted or something like that over here, or again, placed on this table off to the side a little bit. Let's measure the beds. Okay, measuring. Let's do width first. Let's assume shoulder to shoulder to about this line here. This is about 25 inches. You can see that. So 25 inches for each side for shoulder, torso, and then down here at your feet side of things is about 19 inches. So total length from the back door to the end point here is 73 inches. You can see that. So pretty good size twin, size bed if you will, and moving the lagoon table here, that person and the cushion would have the same experience there. Now if one were so inclined, you can use the side cushion, the back cushion here, as I've deployed it here, keeping my, using my knee to keep it in place, this cushion goes here. There's a board that goes between probably the table, I'm guessing. And this would make a very large bed, but you would have to climb out this way to get out to use the restroom in the middle of the night. My personal preference would be like this. So that my feet don't need much space and I would sleep very comfortably here, being able to get out in the middle of the night, which is fine. For a solo traveler, what this does is it does give you a table in bed, which is really kind of interesting. And there's definitely places for iPad storage, book storage, not only in the rails, but down below, you see that? Yeah, so there's a lot of storage when you're using this space for bed. I'm giving this pretty high marks. So for somebody like me, a solo traveler, I could actually supplement my pillow with this pillow, which is firm, but uh, I like firm pillows. So this would really work well for me. So the bedroom size gets uh, three points out of three for me. And for uh, two people sleeping comfortably, that gets three points. The question is, is the bedding. So all the great points of this van, I would probably give it two out of three because you would have to make up your bedding every day. What I would probably figure out how to do is have a really lightweight um, sleeping sack uh, that I would just roll up and put away every morning. That's kind of how I would roll probably, but you know, for what all this van, this van brings, um, I could probably figure that out pretty easy. I would still have a permit table right here where you are watching from. And um, again, having a permanent table is a huge, huge thing for me. And this is really working out nice. Way to go. So out of nine points, I'm gonna give this eight. Next up is the bathroom. One of the most important RV spaces, in my opinion, is the bathroom. Is it functional based on the way you want to RV and your why you want to RV? sitting on the commode it's kind of high off the ground uh, my feet do touch the floor I'm 510 but it is um, if you're on the shorter size your feet are going to be dangling it certainly is big enough to do your business this is the toilet tissue holder right here so you'd be pulling and you probably have to have the doors propped open because you don't have much elbow room on your left elbow at all and if you have the door it's just gonna, yeah let's just try this really fast It would be kind of tight to you know, wipe your bottom. Um, if you're by yourself, you can probably leave one door ajar a little bit. Um, if you're with others, you'll probably figure it out. Uh, this uses a traditional RV toilet, which I appreciate. Uh, but overall, not bad. Next thing I'm gonna look at is the sink. It has a really small sink, it's right here. And can I use that to brush, spit, floss, rinse? Um, it's kind of a yes and no. I'm thinking you would have to really be have a good yoga moves to get your stuff in there. It's kind of like spitting into an, a dentist um, uh, sink. Um, 
And what's kind of interesting is the, the faucet is over the thing. So to wash your hands, you don't have much room at all, but, um, and you have to spit here so it kind of falls down in and you're kind of hitting your head right here. So it has a sink, which is good, but I would say functionality, not really awesome. And you can't swing this out of the way altogether. Um, so then you can kind of get in there a little bit more. So it's either out here, the faucet, or in here, or some combination thereof. So uh, not awesome on the sink. For the shower, um, what I like to do is stand when I shower. I don't want to sit. Um, so the way this works is the shower head goes up here, up to this position. It's pretty directional. It's right this way. So if you're standing, you're going to be really under it. Um, now there is enough room in here to shower. You're going to have to use the shower curtain to protect the beautiful wood in here. So this would come undone and then you would put it across just this front only, which probably isn't too bad because I think there is enough room to, to spritz and shower in here um, without too much trouble. Let's measure this just to give you a sense of size. Depth is at the widest point here about, we'll call it 20, Three inches, but you're really only going to have about 20 inches because of the shower curtain itself. Height-wise, so you have basically just the bottom of the light, 71 inches, and then the overall width is, um, we'll call it 40 inches. So it's pretty, pretty long, uh, a little on the narrow side, um, and very reasonable on the tall. So I think this overall is a very functional bathroom. Sink. You kind of either learn to live with it, use it, or not use it at all. Uh, I would like to see a little bit bigger sink. I think they could have done a little bit wider here, because you're gaining nothing by having this non-available space here. So by making this wider, making this come out a little bit more, I think you'd have a more functional sh uh, sink, which I think people would appreciate if you're putting in a sink at all. It does have this mirror, which is kind of interesting. And uh, I do like the fact you can move it and there's a light above you. I would like to see the light here so it, you're not casting a shadow upon yourself. Um, looks like I need to shave. <laughs> and it's got the, um, whoa, the magnifying mirror so uh, you can see all the wrinkles really clearly. Let's turn that around. But the fact that they include a mirror like that I think is pretty cool and it snaps to the wall so it doesn't rattle while you're in transit. And we round out the bathroom for looking for storage. There's no medicine chest here. No medicine chest here or here. There is some access panel, but um, there's zero storage in the bathroom here, which means you would have to use storage somewhere out here for toothbrushes, toiletries, shampoos, um, things of that nature. So let's do the points on the bathroom. Bathroom points out of a total of 12 possible. I'm giving the toilet three points. I'm giving the sink one point. I'm giving the shower three points and I'm giving storage zero because there is no storage in this bathroom. Looking at storage, this van has a lot of interior storage using cabinets, closets, and drawers. So just right out of the gate, I'm gonna say the overhead storage, um, storage category gets six points, uh, cabinetry and wardrobe and drawers gets three points right away. Garage storage is the next area and this van has no garage storage. So if you want to store a guitar, you want to store a grill, you want to store extra water, nothing can fit underneath the bed because that's where the, the battery pack is and the mechanism for the bed itself. So anything like grill, extra water, cat box, dog kennel, um, they will not fit unless you are putting them in spaces like this, in between the chairs, which would then probably disable the functionality of a front table. Maybe you could park it here at night Right here by the door. There is a fair amount of space right there. Certainly anywhere in the walkway, aisleway, hallway, which is humongous. I don't think you could get either like a dog kennel, cat box, or a grill in this space um, unless you would be stepping over it all the time. Depending on how important big, large items are to travel with you, uh, garage storage would be a bit of a concern in here. But there's so much additional storage even hanging clothes, adjustable shelving, this pull-out pantry, and a set of drawers that can be used for a whole host of items, food, socks, toiletries for the bathroom, anything like that. And with a garbage can in here that we saw earlier, 
they actually put a lot of space to store things in this van just not big bulky items like cat box dog kennel or a grill so the grill would probably have to sit and ride up front when you're in motion and then out on the table. For the storage category, possible total of six points. I'm actually gonna give it five because there is so much usable storage for general purpose items and zero points for the garage storage because there really isn't any separate garage storage that you're not really stepping over things in an, um, because it's always gonna be in your way. So out of, out of six, I'm gonna give it five with a bonus couple points for the beautiful cabinetry and all the extra uh, really functional storage. Way to go coachman. All right, let's look at RV systems. There are five components to RV systems, and that would be water, waste, electricity, heat, and air conditioning. A total of 15 points. This is a big category. The criteria here is, is it easy to use? Is it quiet? Is it a modern interpretation of those systems? And with electricity, that means a lithium equipped. The water gets three points because of its capacity waste is going to get two points because you have to move the hose twice not sure i'm a fan of that for electricity it has a really high quality uh, lithionics based system uh, so modern interpretation of lithium uh, implementation um, it gets three points for that we'll put all the specs right here and heat it uses truma for heat and hot water that gets three points and air conditioning this has been running this entire time not sure how loud it's been during the recording of this but inside, this is on low mode, it's fairly quiet. And it's in the center of the van, which is nice because you can really maximize uh, the cooling, but overall air conditioning gets three points. Uh, systems category, total points of 15 available. Uh, this gets 14, pretty higher marks for systems in the Coachman Nova 20C. Next category is aesthetics, based on build quality, interior design, and the floor plan. Total available points is nine, with each of those three getting three points. So this is an easy one. On build quality, this gets three points. It's beautiful. Interior design, the woodworking is stunning. Three points, glass, backlit. What's not to like about that? So spectacular. Floor plan, out of three points, um, I'm gonna give this two based on my needs. But for, maybe for your needs, it would be a three, but for my needs, um, it's gonna hit two because it hits most of the marks but misses it into a couple of places for floor plan. So for aesthetics, it's gonna get eight out of nine total points. Rounding out the workability, let's do that quick. There are four criteria for a total of 12 points. Criteria number one is two laptops in use at the same time at the same table. Are there correct placement of outlets? Is lighting good? And again, can you have separate spaces if you're working or maybe even doing a conference call? Is there separation inside the van for space for two people? Clearly, two laptops at this table is not going to be comfortable. It can be done, but whether you're sitting here, looking at it like that, and this person sitting here, it can be done, uh, but you will definitely want either a second lagoon mount and a second table or a larger table overall. I'd probably go for two tables because um, this is not ideal. Outlet placements, there's outlets right where you're sitting, and there's an outlet right over here. So outlets, no problem. Lighting. This is beautiful. These stunning windows just let everything in. And you almost have a 360 degree view sitting in the back of the van, working from multiple zip positions. I'm really liking what this would be like to work in this if you're in a really beautiful area. Uh, not an RV dealer. Sunshine State RVs, parking lot. It's pretty cool. Separation, no doubt. You can put two people here pretty easily, but with the pole mounted table up front in the cab with the cab spun around somebody can be back here working very easily sleeping watching tv something like that somebody can be up there working for sure and for me that is a very much a stellar separation of workspace so let's tally up the points i have a possible of 12 points uh, two laptops at a table i'm giving one point because you can do it but it's not optimal without putting it on the table or putting it on the table here for outlet placements, three points, lighting, three points, and separation, three points. So out of 12 possible points, workability gets 10 points. Way to go, coach. Our last category is likability. Total of 12 points available. And I gotta tell you, I have to give high points on every one of these four criteria. 
Criteria number one, is the van nice to look at? Inside and out, a home run, three points. Fun factor for three points, this van you could have a lot of fun. I would probably lift it, I would probably wrap it, I would probably put a brush guard on it, but the awning style windows and where it can take you and the comfort it would do that in, to me, makes this a really nice rig. So fun factor, three points. Enjoy time in the van, there is no doubt that this would be a delightful van for my eyes, my body, my spirit, uh, and the way I like to RV. It addresses things almost to a T. So uh, time in the van gets three points. And the last one is value. We'll put the MSRP price that's on the Sunshine State RV right here. I think for the value that you get for this van is pretty high. For likability, this van gets 12 out of 12 points. So to close out our livability, workability, and likability of the Coachman Nova 20C, let's do the total. Each category totaled up to 87 points out of a total possible of 99. That is an amazing score. It kind of surprised me, but kind of did not. I've always loved this van, this floor plan. It misses the marks for me on just a couple of points, but overall, this is a stunning Class B camper van RV that would hit the mark for me. If I had to go buy a new rig today, this would be near the top of my list for sure. Importantly, does it meet your needs specifically? So to help you with that, what we want you to do is go to my website, go small, live large, download the worksheet, come up with your categories, come up with your tools like the coffee pot, the 12 pack of beer, what is important to you to make your RVing experience super important and really non-negotiable, and then do your own point score system using this template as a worksheet and take that to your dealerships, spend time in those vans that are in your short list and see what score what is scored the highest and would be at the top of your list. Hope you enjoyed it. Comment below, thumb up if you learned anything, and subscribe to the channel if you like camper van tours, camper van places, and camper van products. Until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. See you later. One last thing, we've got to give a huge shout out to Nick, the GM here at Sunshine State RVs and the team, allowing us access to this van for us several hours to do this video. They are really a quality act. And for a big thanks again for Nick for taking time to give a tour from his perspective on this van. You don't want to miss that. And uh, if you're shopping for a van, check out Sunshine State RVs. They do only vans. See ya. <laughs>